Hello, we're returning back to A Dog's Life. We're in our next pair, uh, chapter called The Wheelbarrow. We were born in the wheelbarrow, M Bone and I. Mother, her name was Stream, but to Bone and me, she was simply Mother, managed to climb into it early that first morning, having decided that it was an ideal nest for her puppies. Mother gave birth to five puppies, but only Bone and I survived. Two of the puppies were born dead, and a third lived for less than an hour. He was tiny, too tiny, and his legs were misshapen. Mother tossed him out of the wheelbarrow and ignored him. He whimpered several times, then was silent. Bone and I were strong, though. We nuzzled into Mother and nursed from her. We squirmed and wiggled. We slept. Our heads curled under our chests. We burrowed. We nursed some more. And when, after our first night, Mother saw that Bone and I were still strong and active and eating well, she gave us our names. She chose, as mother's dogs do, names of things that are important to her. So I was known as Squirrel, and my brother was known as Bone. My earliest memories are of, are of warmth, comfort, and food. For the first days of my life, my eyes and ears were not open. Bone and I slept most of the time, rousing ourselves only to eat. Awake or asleep, we curled into our nest, each into each other, and into mother. I could feel the heartbeats of my brother and mother. During this time, mother left the wheelbarrow as little as possible, but she did have to leave it. She would rise unsteadily, cover bone and me in straw and burlap, climb over the edge of the wheelbarrow, and leave the shed to relieve herself or and to find food. She would come back as soon as she could, and then bone and I would squirm into her. When bone and I had been alive long enough for the moon to change from a disc to a half disc, our eyes and ears opened, and my world slowly became clear to me head and legs wobbling. I stood in the wheelbarrow and gazed about the shed. The light was dim, but I could make out the nesting boxes and later the eyes that peered from within them. All day long, the adult cats came and went. When I wasn't sleeping, I followed their movements in the shed. The cats trotted back and forth, slinking through the open door. Sometimes they returned carrying small rodents in their mouth, sometimes birds. I watched them take their food back to, their ne to the nesting boxes. The cats, sleek and lean and almost always hungry, would pause at the boxes and glance around the shed before leaping through a hole. They glanced around the shed before leaving the holes, too. Their glances always took in mother. The shed cats were not our friends, but I think we trusted one another, even as wary as we all were. One day, one of the shed cats, the missing yellow one mother had met when she first discovered the shed, left her kittens and did not return for a long, long time. By afternoon, her kittens were mewing loudly, so loudly, that Mother jumped out of the wheelbarrow and poked her nose in their nesting boxes. Nesting, nesting box. I heard all sorts of spitting and growling noises from the adult cats in the shed, but Mother ignored them. She backed out of the box with a kitten in her mouth and dropped it on the floor. Then she pulled out two more kittens and lay on the floor beside them and lifted her hind leg in the air. The kittens burrowed into Mother the way Bone and I did, searching for milk. Behind the shed door, behind us, the shed door eased open. Standing in it was the yellow cat. She stared at Mother for a moment, then bolted through the shed. Mother leaped to her feet, the kittens tumbling away, and she scrambled back to our wheelbarrow while the cat collected her babies. Our shed was busy all day long and all night long, too. Mother and Bone and I tended to sleep at night, but not the cats, and definitely not the mice. The mice were busy and noisy. We could hear them chewing and climbing. There was no place in the shed the mice couldn't get to. They scurried up walls and posts and along rafters. They ran in and out of holes too tiny to notice. They emerged from unlikely places under flower pots and inside beams. Usually they could outrun the cats or escape from them. But sometimes a cat was smarter or more patient than a mouse. And then with a squeak and a flash of teeth and claws, the mouse became a meal. For a long time, I felt secure as a dog, even a small one in our shed. Mother was the biggest creature there, and she didn't fear the cats or the mice. But my eyes and ears had been open for just a few days when I realized what nearby threat Mother did fear, and that was the fox. The fox, the one with the four kids, lived underneath the Marion's new garden shed. I didn't know where her mate was. I never saw him, and I wouldn't see the mother or her kits with my own eyes until the time I was big enough and strong enough to leave the wheelbarrow and go outside. Mother saw the fox often, though. She paid attention to her, and she even learned her name. Mother didn't learn the names of the other creatures on the Marion's property. 
that the fox was a different story, and that was because Mother had recognized how dangerous she could be. The fox's name was Mine, and I believe she had named herself. Mine wasn't interested in Mother, and she didn't know Mother had puppies, so Bone and I were not in danger from Mine. Still, Mother was afraid of her. Bone and I would peer over the edge of the wheelbarrow and see Mother at the door to the shed. She, had, she sat planted on her haunches, her brow creased, gazing out at the field beyond the Marion's backyard. I could tell when mine was in the field because Mother sat at strict and grim attention. If a squirrel was out there, Mother would sit quivering, her tail twitching. She might even jump to her feet and give chase. But when mine was outside, Mother watched motionless except for the slow turn of her head as she tracked mine from a garden to the woods or from the playhouse to the Marion's porch. This was why Mother feared mine. Mine had no sense. She didn't even have the sense to steer clear of the Marion's. We wandered through the yard at all hours, not caring who might see her. She didn't teach her kits to fear the Marion's. She didn't try to hide her kills. She was reckless. She was bold. She was cheeky. Mother thought mine put us all in danger. I didn't quite understand this, though, not when I was still such a young puppy that I couldn't leave our nest. All I knew then was life in our warm wheelbarrow, where each day was much the same as the next. Bone and Mother and I would lie in a pile of fur and feet and tails and snouts. Bone and I would nurse. When Mother left the shed, which she did more often as Bone and I grew older, I would peer over the edge of the wheelbarrow at the cats and mites. I watched the mice dart and hide, listen to them chew and squeak. I watched the cats come and go, listen to them mew and pure, purr. Every now and then a cat or an older kitten would venture out of the shed and not return. I realized, I realized now what was happening. The mice were eating corn and seeds. The cats were eating mice. The owls and the hawks were eating the cats. For a time being, I didn't have to worry about this, though, or about mine. Mother fed me, mother protected me, and I watched the world of the shed from our wheelbarrow island.